Good morning. And welcome to worship again this morning. Good to be here. Um, I want to share something with you. I've shared it in the Bible study and at the first service. I, it's just exciting to me. As, as some of you know, and it's been on the screen, Pastor Gallagher and I have, been, have started doing uh, services up at Snyder Village, uh, third Friday of, of every month. And um, 9.30 in the morning, and everybody's welcome to come if you'd like to. But um, anyway, this past Friday, we had a service. And uh, I went, prepared communion, went up there to do the service. And this Friday, you know, we, 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 we have gotten a small group before. This Friday, everything, the group doubled. And we had a really good showing and it was really, really a, a blessing to be there. And the, uh, the response from the people there, the just heartfelt, warm, you know, thank you for doing, oh, we need this, thank you. I just, you know, and we need to know that. You know, it's a ministry of this church, and it's just, they are so thrilled that we are there doing that. So, boy, if, if any of you are free on on Friday mornings to come and, and just share that with them. That would be really cool. So uh, that's all I have for announcements. I don't think we still know anything. I think somebody told me perhaps Wednesday of this week we're supposed to get an answer. But with that, I would ask you to just rise and share, uh, share the blessings with one another. Welcome those around you. Good morning. Blessings. Blessings. I gotta go ask Ann something. Huh? I have to get over to Ann. Okay. Oops, I don't know that I pull you off. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Good morning. Morning. Huh? Where's the John? Huh? Where's the John? <laughs> I said, morning. Or hey, or hey, you. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. And now we have our opening song, Good, Good Father.
And so, yeah, please rise. So we make our beginnings in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness. As you will come and my deliverance will be. The deliverance of the Lord comes to us today as we gather in this house of prayer, united as with all people who trust in the name of Jesus. Let us search our hearts and our minds, bowing before our gracious Father and confessing our sins to him. Delivering Lord, you invite all people into your holy house of prayer. We confess that we have not kept justice, choosing to go our own way instead of following your direction. We admit that we have not lived righteously, breaking your commands by what we think, say, and do. Saving Lord, you invite all people to come to your mercy, to know your mercy. At the cross of our Savior, Jesus Christ, you defeated our enemies <coughs> to sin and to death. Help us to live in this victory, trusting in your promises, and gathering to all your people to praise your name forever. Amen. Deliverance has come to you. Salvation is yours to both Jews and Gentiles, to those of every nation under heaven, the good news of Jesus has been given. God has heard your prayer for mercy and has offered you a place in his kingdom. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by the authority of him, my king, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our intro this morning, we're going to use Psalm 28. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. To you, O Lord, I call my rock. Be not deaf to me. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help. When I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary, 
Blessed be the Lord. For he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts and with my song I give thanks to him. Glory Glory be to to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We give thanks and praise to you, O God for making your house a place of prayer for all peoples. You have blessed us with your grace and salvation. Through the gospel, make us voices of invitation to all people. That with us they may serve you with joy and gladness all our days. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, One God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Kathy is going to read our Old Testament reading from Isaiah. Our Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 56. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, For soon my salvation will come, and my deliverance be revealed. (laughs) And the farmers who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it, and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle comes from Romans chapter 11. Excuse me. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. For I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous, and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, What will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake, but as rewards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient. In order that by the mercy shown to you, they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from the region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon, but he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. 
be it done for you as you desire, and her daughter was healed instantly. <coughs> this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Okay, I'm going to ask for the children to come up and bring their backpacks. Good morning. Good morning. Do you, know, do you know what we're going to do this morning? We're going to pray for your backpacks. And we're going to pray for you guys, too. It was really cute this morning. The first service, I had two little ones. And they came up, and I sat down. You, know, you get an old person on the floor. Sometimes it's not easy to get up. But I, I sat down on the floor with them, and we had a lot of fun. And we talked about praying for the backpacks. And when... And, and the little girl, when I prayed, she closed her eyes really tight, and she prayed with me. It was really kind of cute. So anyway, we're going to pray for your backpacks and for, and for you all, for the school year, for, for you to, be, to learn and to be happy and enjoy what you're doing and, and succeed in, in whatever you do in your efforts in school. So let us pray. Our gracious Father, Lord Jesus said, send me the children, and you have sent us the children. And Father, we thank you for that. Lord, the laughter and the love and the smiles and the joy that come from children are the, are the sparks that, that keep us young, that keep us uh, joyful, that, that help us in our walk with you. Father, you were right when you said, send the children. <clears throat> for we are to come to you as children. Father, we pray for these children today. We pray for the backpacks. We pray over the backpacks that, um, <clears throat> that the children are all inspired, that they are guarded, that they are kept safe, that they are protected, and that they are taught with love, and that they just have a joyous year learning, growing, and trusting you. Father, we pray that these backpacks would, we pray blessings on these pack ba backpacks, that they would, uh, each time the children see them, that they would remember, perhaps, that blessings and, and, uh, and see them and think of you, Father, as they go through the school year. Lord, we thank you. We thank you again for the children that you place in our midst, for the children that you give to us to raise and nurture. We are blessed indeed, Lord. We just thank you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Now, before you go, what I'm going to do, <clears throat> is give you each one of those, and what that says is that your backpack has been blessed. Okay? So you can put that on your black backpack, and everybody will know who sees it, that your backpack has been blessed and that you have been blessed and that you have been prayed for. Okay. I want to thank you guys all for coming and bringing your backpacks and I have hope you have a very blessed year and have fun as you're learning in school thank you Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so little ones to him belong they are weak but he is strong yes Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me, 
Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Our song of the day is Make Me a Servant. It's a powerful prayer. Make me a servant. You know, one of the, <clears throat> one of the things I, I've talked about before is um, when you get up in the morning, a simple prayer, two words, use me. Use me, Lord. And you will be amazed at what God will do and the people he will put in your path and how he will use you. Today we're going to talk about foreigners. And if you look at your worship folder, the front of your worship, I don't know how many of us do that regularly. The front of the worship folder says foreigners. And it says, I will bring them to my holy mountain. It's kind of, a, kind of an interesting, kind of a strange approach, I thought. That's, you know, for, for a worship folder, we're talking about foreigners. Uh, I want to read again just two verses from the text from Isaiah that Kathy read, um, verses 6 and 7. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love in the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, 
everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings, their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. And it's interesting, of course, you heard those similar words in, in some of the readings that we had just a few minutes ago. What Isaiah was doing with these words was setting a stage. He was preparing the people to get past the idea that God only came for the Israelites that God's plan was to welcome all people. That's what Isaiah was doing, foreigners included. The foreigners, of course, were those who were not Israelites. So who is a foreigner? You ever feel like a foreigner? You ever feel like an outsider? Have you ever felt like a foreigner? I think there are times perhaps in all of our lives where we feel a bit perhaps like a foreigner, a little out of place, a little uncomfortable, wondering, will I belong? Will I fit in? Will I find my place? Will other people accept me? Maybe, maybe it's moving to a new place, maybe it's starting a new school, maybe um, a new job. It's stressful for everyone, and it doesn't go away with age. Um, back in the end of 2020 when I lost my wife, and, and I knew my daughter and I talked, and I knew that I needed to move closer to the kids, so I, they be, made preparations, and I and I began the work to move down to Washington, where they live. I knew it was where I needed to be, but how would I start a new life at this age? How would I find my place in a community? I certainly couldn't camp on my kid's doorstep. I knew that. I had to find my life. COVID and then the, the freak accident that broke my back back in 21, um, <laughs> put me in a house um, by myself where, um, I, you know, I couldn't drive, I couldn't leave, couldn't do much of anything. And uh, I was kind of a foreigner without question, and I was kind of stuck in, in that one place. But then came, of course, Pastor Miller and this church and this faith community. All of you, each and every one of you, been a part in welcoming me to the family of believers in this place. And I am no longer a foreigner. But how about the times when we simply find ourselves in surroundings where we are uncomfortable, where there are strange things happening, and we understand that we are really foreigners? A lot of years ago, I was working in an industry that was a worldwide industry, and I was sent to Colombia, Colombia, South America, on a business trip. What an eye-opener. That was unbelievable. The plane landed in Bogota, Colombia. Bogota is, is, is seated kind of in the, at the, in the hills of the Andes, and the Andes go up behind Bogota, and it's beautiful. It's a breathtaking view. It's unbelievable. And so the agent picked me up at the airport, and as we were driving to the hotel, I was looking at the mountains, and I love mountains, and I love to be in the mountains, I love to climb in the mountains, I love mountains. So I said to him, all very innocently, gee, I was going to be there for a week, and I said, sometime this week, can we go up in the mountains? He responded quickly, and he said, well, he said, the people who go up into the mountains are generally never heard from again. <laughs> That's where the robbers and the highwaymen live, is up in the mountains. 
And I looked at him and I said, we don't need to go up there on my account. <laughs> and then, later in the week, I flew to Cali, Colombia, which is right on the equator. Beautiful city, gorgeous city. And uh, so we traveled some in Cali. One evening, we went out to dinner. And as we got in the cab to come back to the hotel, the sun had gone down. It was dark. So we're in this taxi cab driving across town. And uh, they have traffic lights there, just like we do. Red lights, green lights, you know, stop and go. But it doesn't work the way it works here. And as we're driving across town, the driver in the cab, every time we got to a red light, would start flashing his lights and honking his horn and driving right through the red light. Well, I have a question, and so I asked the obvious. Is there some reason we don't want to stop at these red lights? You know, it seems like a good idea. And he looked at me, and he said, well, he said, if I stop at a red light, someone will come with a gun and take the car, and probably our lives as well. You know, once again, I said, don't stop on my account. <laughs> Yeah, um, it was a crazy place. I, you'd wake, I'd wake up in the morning in the hotel, look out the window, and there were jeeps driving up and down the street with machine guns and men mounting them. And I thought, I don't belong here. I am clearly a foreigner in this place. This is crazy. A number of years later, Nancy and I went to the Holy Land. Some of you have been to the Holy Land. It is an incredible trip. It is absolutely spectacular. You know, we traveled through, we went through Jerusalem. I was in a boat on the Sea of Galilee. It was absolutely a trip of a lifetime. But that is not to say that there weren't some unusual moments. It is, after all, the Middle East. We had left Jerusalem, Israel, went down into Egypt, down to Mount Sinai, we stayed at a hotel down by St. Catharines and, 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 you know, saw Mount Sinai, did that. And then we left there and traveled through the desert up to Cairo, where we were to fly out. And it's a long drive, and it got dark, and we were in a bus. And the bus had no lights inside, it was dark. And the bus also had no lights on the outside. It was dark. Well, that was a little strange. We're on the highway going, I don't know how fast. And, you know, the moon lit gives you some evidence of the road in front of you, but there were no headlights turned on. And that was kind of weird to see. And so I'm looking out the front window, and you could occasionally see lights flashing in the distance. The lights flashing in the distance was a car coming. And they didn't turn their lights on either, but they would occasionally, on and off, on and off a couple times, just to let you know that they were on the road. And I thought, well, this is strange. Why in the world don't we have headlights to drive with? Another strange world. The driver said, well, if we turn on the headlights, we become a target that they can see. And so all they do is flash the lights and play this bizarre game of hide and seek on the highway so that no one can target them and no one knows where they are. And you see the flashing lights so you know a car is coming, but you don't ever really know where it is. And that's kind of okay, I guess. And so I thought about it. Here, here I am, Nancy and I, were on this 40-foot moving target. I was pretty sure that I didn't belong there either, <laughs> you know. It was just strange. I was a foreigner in that place. Um, those cases that I just shared with you are, I mean, they were a little bit scary, but they're, they're extreme cases. And those examples were truly from another world. And fortunately, we don't live in that world. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> I live in this world, this world, here today, Washington, Illinois, our Savior Lutheran Church. 
I talked about being lost when I moved down here, something of a foreigner. But again, we can probably all think about times in our lives when we have been a foreigner or felt out of place. New surroundings, will we fit that kind of question? Is there a scary world out there? There is, certainly. It's getting scarier. Uh, and today, that scary world is closer than Colombia or Egypt. It's gotten closer. I think of the people in Chicago or Los Angeles or New York or San Francisco. Uh, heavy, I think the government just told the people in San Francisco, don't come to work. Stay at home and work from home because it's not safe to drive to work. Whoa, that's pretty crazy. Uh, people who have invested their lives in those communities and they're told that it's not safe to go to work. And then we see this, and we wonder, how much closer will it get? But then we look to the truth. The truth is, we are only passing through this world. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. The Bible tells us to fear not. Do you know how many times the Bible says that? 365 times, one for each day of the week. God tells us, Psalm 46.10, Be still and know that I am God. Place your trust in me. I am the one. Several times we hear Jesus saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He didn't say it was coming sometime in the future. He said it is here now, and we are a part of God's kingdom here now. His word from the cross we think of, it is finished. That resonates through us. It was completed. The evil one is defeated, and we have the victory. And then the Lord's words from Isaiah, remind us of the purpose of the sacred place into which we have entered as believers, as Christ followers. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, he writes. We must be a house of prayer. We have to be. We pray today for the children. What a joy, what a beautiful thing to be able to pray for the children. We are blessed to have children here. It is just wonderful. They are our future. They are the joy that we all share. We pray for the new pastor. We wait for the answer. We pray for Pastor Gallagher. We pray for each other as we share our lives together. We pray without ceasing. We talked about that some in the, in the Bible study today. Our Bible study has been centered on prayer today. Even from ancient times, God invited all peoples, no matter who they were, where they came from, to enter his presence and receive forgiveness from sin. In Christ Jesus, crucified and raised to life again for our salvation, we trust those promises of God. We place our trust in him. <clears throat> those pro promises are promises that he makes personally to each and every one of us. He died for all. He died for each one of us. Standing together as one. I think of this church. Standing together as one. We, though many, and hopefully more, form one family, and we are a part of a greater faith community that includes believers across this community. We form one family and belong to one everlasting kingdom. Together, we receive God's gifts. Together, we raise our hands and our voices in our prayers and our praises to God. 
together we gather to experience the life God offers for all people. And there are no outsiders or foreigners in this place. We are one together. Amen. Please rise to fable as we share the words of our faith and the, and the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we gather our offering. Uh, gracious Father, Lord, we pray your blessings on these gifts. We bring these gifts to you, Father, that we might be used, that we might be an instrument of peace, of love into your world, that we might be able to make a difference in a world that needs you, a world in, that needs to hear your word and feel your presence. Let us pray for the whole church, the whole church, God's church in Christ Jesus, and all people according to their needs. Lord, I just pray your blessings on this congregation, on this church. Pray your blessings on Pastor Johnson as he, as he considers the call, as Pastor Gallagher, as, as he... Uh, Continue to, continues to serve us and, and struggles with some of the uh, thorns that he has in his flesh. We pray that for the church, for each one of us, that we are a people of prayer, a house of prayer, that we can make a difference to you. Father, grant that our church might steadfastly proclaim your gifts, your calling, that the disobedient might receive mercy and that those who hear would become grafted into Jesus Christ, the true vine. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we 
We pray your blessings on each one of us in our work, our occupations, the things that we do, the way that the world that we interact with. Grant us that we might use well the fruits of our labor. Give us generosity for those we come across to need. Bless the tithes and offerings again that accompany our sacrifice of praise. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we think this morning of our government officials, state, local, those who protect us, those who guide us, those who we just pray that they keep justice and do righteousness, do mercy in your name's sake, according to your will. Father, we pray for, for peace in our world. We pray for peace in our cities where turmoil exists, where, where, uh, where the work of evil is, is at hand. We pray for steadfast leadership from those in those cities. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we think today of those in our church, those in our community, those in our families who need prayer. We thank you, Father, for the healing that you've done in, in uh, Diane Doherty for her broken leg. She looks good and she's feeling well, and we thank you for that. Lord, we think of this morning, I was given a prayer request for a Tom... Barlett, right, Barlett. He's very ill, it says, at OSF. Tom and his family are very good friends with Theresa uh, Armstrong and Liz Reed family. Lord, we, there are others that we, we don't know the names, but they're in our hearts, they're in our minds. And just pray for those in our... Father, I pray for those in our families and those in our neighborhood who don't know you, that uh, you'd show them, that you'd provide healing for them and guidance for them and draw them to you. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you have that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever. We close this prayer today as we rise and pray together the words that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor, and give you peace. Amen. Please have a seat, and uh, our closing hymn is Old Church Choir.
Go in peace and serve the Lord.